and welcome to the lecture on managed services. Uh, managed services is an interesting field, which I'll go into more detail on, particularly for those of you who might think that normally food and beverage requires uh, long hours and evenings and weekends when your friends are all working and so on. <clears throat> managed services is a little different. Managed services allows you to go into operations that work normal work hours, believe it or not, in the food and beverage area. So it's often an area that's not as well understood, but it's a great career path if the food and beverage side of the business is one that you have an, an interest in. So let's talk about it a little more. First off, what distinguishes managed services from just commercial food services? Well, the, the key here, managed services, uh, it's necessary that you meet both the needs of the guest and the institution. So the institution in this case could be a corporation, a university, or whatever it may be, uh, as well as the student, the employee who is eating in those facilities. Uh, in, in, uh, it says in some operations, uh, the guest may or may not have uh, alternative dining operations and, and might be captive. Uh, if you're in a location that's rather remote in terms of where that corporate offices might be, they may not have other places to go. Uh, in other cases, they may just be able to hop in their cars and drive over to someplace else or walk or take public transportation wherever they may be to alternative aspects of things. Uh, so many managed operations are, are uh, housed in the host organizations uh, that have the food service to primary business, that don't have that, excuse me, as food service primary business. So they, they're not uh, a Silicon Valley uh, high-tech firm is not in the field of food and beverage. That's not their expertise. Uh, manufacturing operation, whatever it may be, they, they don't. that's not their main source of operations and what they do. So therefore, they look to someone to outsource it to in the managed, service, uh, in the managed services side. So managed service operations have produced food in large quantity, large batches, uh, much like you would in the uh, in the area of banquets, for example, but in this case, it's going to be consumed at specific times at lunch by a number of different people. You have to have a lot of different varieties. It's not just one meal like you would have at a banquet for a facility, for example, where you might just have chicken on the menu and maybe have a vegetarian meal. In this case, you have to have all kinds of different sources, and so you need to know uh, what that volume business is about and how to cater to it, how to make sure that what you fix uh, is going to be consumed, right? Because you obviously don't want to have food waste or cost associated with it. So there's quite a bit of analysis, if you will, of what people want, what they need, uh, what they eat, essentially, that has to go into the planning for our managed services. And today, in addition to that, really critical that we get into this whole health, healthy foods and meeting the demands of customers. Uh, you see this particularly in the United States. You see a lot of this with the food service at, uh, let's say, uh, primary school, secondary school, or what we call elementary school and, and junior high, high school in the U.S., where the items on the menu that the students want may not be the healthiest foods. So how do you get them to eat the apples and the blueberries and the uh, fruits and the vegetables that they need when what they want to eat are french fries and uh, hamburgers and so on, you know, and how do you make those items even more, even healthier? So we have to educate the customer on sustainable practices as well. So there's a great deal of waste that comes from a large amount of quantity of people eating in, in a facility. Uh, I go back to my days when I taught at the University of San Francisco. They had the recycle compost trash bins they would actually station a student there at lunch in the main cafeteria, which was only one of the choices you had to go and eat. But they would station a student there to tell you which bin to put things in because they were trying to make sure that they put things in the right place and didn't cause extra work for the people who would be sorting through that, uh, that composting or that, uh, and that uh, trash or so on afterwards, just as an added benefit in terms of what they did. Now, where are they? Okay. Schools and universities, we talked about that. Uh, convention centers, uh, stadiums, arenas, uh, leisure services of, of all types. But 
the probably the bigger aspect of it and the daily aspect is the business and industry community, which is the corporate offices and corporate facilities. Healthcare is another major part of it and a very interesting one, which we'll talk a little bit more about. And then I add to the managed services aspect, I add the in-flight or the airline food service, and particularly here in Singapore because of SATs, which I'll talk about more in terms of the uniqueness of how they operate and what they do. So let's talk about healthcare facilities. <clears throat> interesting part about healthcare facilities is you have patients with special menus or long-term care people that have certain needs in their assisted living communities. Plus you have visitors and employees and you have to serve all of these. So you have to provide healthy meals. Now, typically in our field, the manager of the managing managed food services operations is not a nutritionist. There are nutritionists on staff at the hospitals who make the determinations of what meals are should be available for patients in what areas. And that then in turn leads to you as the managed service operation having certain restrictions on what meals you can offer, what you can do as alternatives for the patient. And the ingredients of those items then become an important part of what's uh, developed and what's done. So it's important, of course, that each time you serve a patient that you recognize what the menu items were and what they were designated to be by the nutritionist. So you have to work hand in hand with nutritionists. When I used to teach at San Francisco State, I used to have students from the nutrition program in the human resource module that I taught there interesting perspectives that they had were quite a bit different and they had to go through a lot more scientific study of uh, foods and so on than what you would do if you were going through as the manager of the operation, needless to say. Right? And we have that here at SIT now in some of the areas that we're teaching in the food sciences area, very different than the managing of it, but they're creating what the menu items are, what needs to be there, what ingredients need to be there. That's not what you're doing in managing the operations. Uh, the service is given by trays in the cafeteria and the dining rooms to the employees and to the visitors, right, that are there. So this is a uh, typical buffet kind of operation that you need to work with in terms of what items you have and you're charging for those services to that guest. They're not being provided as part of the hospital service. But the main focus is still about the uh, aspect of understanding that everything comes out on a tray, whether you're in the guest room or whether you're in the guest room, yeah, that's a nice way to put it, in the hospital room uh, or within the operation of the cafeteria, if you say, uh, or canteen as we would call them here in, in Asia. Now the business industry segment, which is really the area that I'd encourage those of you who have an interest here to explore further because these are companies that operate the food service. Uh, either themselves or through an outside source. Most, as you'll see, are outside source, but some do it internally. Uh, most do the outside contractors. But self-operations, Google is one. And I have eaten at one of the Google operations in San Francisco, and they have wonderful food. But they hire people who are specialists in the area of the chefs as well as the managers of those operations. Uh, and then there's a third aspect where you become the liaison between the two. Uh, you sort of translating the corporate philosophy into what you need to serve in terms of the customer, uh, the employee. Uh, how much leeway do you want? How many? How much do you spend on those uh, on those employees? Google spends a lot, and they're well known for it, and it's one of the reasons why they attract people. I mean, it's not the main reason, of course, but it's one of those perks that makes for an extra value to that Google employee, and you have to recognize that when you're working for them. Your contracting side of it, as I mentioned, is about 80% of that BI business. At least these are statistics from North America, where it's the primary emphasis. So you see that a lot of units out there, 30,000, there are a lot of business and industries that maybe on the surface you don't realize are using an outside source to create their food alternatives for their employees internally. The better the food internally, the better the employee sees it as a benefit, also keeps them on the campus, uh, keeps them more involved, interaction, networking, all the things that you would want from a corporate perspective. Other managed service operations go beyond food. 
uh, housekeeping, custodial cares, environmental services, that's a big area. Used in hotels in some cases where these are outsourced, not done by the hotel themselves. Now, you don't see the big brands doing this, but you might see a franchisee or you might see a smaller independent hotel doing that, bringing in outside people. Uh, maintenance and engineering. This is a very specialized area. You don't get trained on that when you go through and get a hospitality business degree. But there are people who are trained in the mechanical engineering side of things that you need to know to operate a hotel. There's usually a small number of employees in a hotel, so outsourcing it to a company that has that kind of expertise might be a good alternative. Grounds and landscaping, especially in big operations where you have resort operations, that could be an outsource. Uh, procurement and materials um, management, getting companies involved who will give you volume purchase agreements being part of another organization. A company like Marriott has its own procurement division. They used to have, when they had their in-flight catering operations, they used to have one central source. In fact, I, I shared an office with them one time and I learned more about what they do and the volume business that they do to purchase and what discounts that gives to a hotel operation as a result of that. Uh, office and mail services, concierge services. Uh, I actually saw a situation uh, a number of years ago at the Westin Hotel, at the time it was Westin Hotel, it's not managed by Westin anymore, in Santa Clara, California, where they outsourced the services. You went to a screen in the, in the lobby, of, of a um, video screen, and you then made a call, which would be essentially like a Skype call, to the concierge who worked out of her home. Now, she used to be at the property, but she, for family reasons, was staying home. So, But she could be available at any time, and she ended up selling her services to other hotels as well. She would be a concierge, so they outsourced it to her. Uh, patient transportation services in hospitals is another area that you certainly would outsource. You don't typically do that in a hospital itself. Leisure and recreation side of the business, a big part of managed food services at stadiums, arenas, theme parks. Now, Disney has always done their own. You know, recently, in recent years, they've started to allow some outsourcing. But in my days, when I was uh, liaisoning with them, when I was in Orlando, they did everything themselves. Even though, no question about it, McDonald's could deliver a much more quality product of the fast food nature Disney felt they had to do it themselves. Now, they don't do that as much anymore. Uh, state or national parks, zoos, aquariums, you know, venues where food and beverage are provided by a large number of people, that's normally not the specialization of the venue. So therefore, you outsource convention centers being another example of something like that. Uh, stadium point of service, for example, that what we're talking about here, hot dog stands, restaurants within it. Uh, in the stands where you have vendors roaming throughout the stands, but more importantly, and where you make some of the big dollars as a managed operation, are in the super boxes, the suites, the sky boxes, the, the kind of dollars that are spent there by corporations, by individuals, uh, in the entertainment side of it, that can make that a very lucrative side of the business. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the in-flight food service. This is a very unique area. And here in Singapore, we're blessed with SATS, uh, which is a tremendous operation in itself in terms of what they are able to do far beyond the scope of just SIA and feeding the passengers on there. Uh, L LSG Sky Chefs, a German company, largest in, in the business. How are menus determined? One question, right? Well, in North America, you don't have food service on airplanes, so no worries. But on international flights, and certainly here within Asia, they're determined by what the trends are, what people want. It may not seem like that when you're on board, but they're constantly changing items along the way in order to meet that customer demand. They're surveying people. They're trying to find out all the time what works, what doesn't. Additionally, why is food so, so bland? Well, you're eating it at a high altitude uh, in a pressurized cabin. That makes for a lot of differences. SATS walked me through their operation and showed me how they go about doing the testing. They bring in people into their testing lab. Maybe someday you'll be lucky enough to be one of those to try different items. They do that with the uh, flight attendants, the, the cabin crew of SIA. They bring them in. They test items. They see whether they 
have the right taste, what food is there. They keep testing and trying all the time, trying to make sure that they get an item that tastes good and also stays within the budget. Of course, in first class, in a lot of operations, they're using celebrity chefs today to design and set menus. But it's not like serving it in a restaurant. They have to do things differently. Now, as I mentioned, North America, Asia, very different. Here, we're really concerned about what food items are going to go on to the airplane. In the U.S., the in-flight is more about beverages, uh, snacks, items that can be boxed and sold. They don't do any typical food service in the North American market any longer. Special events is another area of managed services. We'll talk more about special events as a mice type event later on in the trimester. But when we talk about it from a food standpoint, <clears throat> who's going to serve the guests at the Olympics, the participants at the Olympics? How about at professional golf tournaments? And not only at professional golf tournaments or tennis tournaments for <clears throat> the guests in the stand, but also for all the corporate tents, all the corporate areas, and who's going to do the food service for all those? F1, what areas of F1 are going to need food service operations? What are we dealing with there? is yet another example of what we're talking about in terms of the area of managed services. Now, this is a global business. Right? It's not just something that happens within the immediate market. And the companies on a global basis, <clears throat> Sodexo, Compass, Aramark, probably the most well-known. Uh, Compass and Sodexo, as I'll mention here and go into more detail, are here in Singapore. Aramark is not. They are in China, Japan, and Korea, though, in Asia. Uh, Center Plate is a U.S. and U.K. operation. Delaware North is a U.S. And, uh, and U.K. operation. These are some of the bigger names in the managed services. You won't see their name over the door. They are the behind-the-scenes people running those operations. But you will see in U.S. Uh, convention venues in particular, you'll see Sodexo, Compass, and Aramark Center Plate in there for sure, and even in some cases Delaware North. Let's relate that to Singapore. What are somebody, some of the companies here in Singapore that you might consider as alternatives and options for managed services? Well, I mentioned SATS already. SATS doesn't just do airline food service. SATS is also the service for the armed, armed forces. So all of you guys who've done your NS, you have eaten SATS food out there. They also deal with hospitals here, and they do hospital food service aspects. So you could get an operation where you... As I mentioned earlier, we get part of the healthcare aspect, running the operations in that area. So they're much broader than what you might think. They don't just do in-flight meals. They also do in-flight services in addition to that. The Select Group, uh, Pro3 and Third Place are two of their companies. As you see, 35,000 meals a day for various customers, the electronics, semiconductor, supply chain, oil and gas, schools, government sectors, they, they do the whole Gambit, all aspect of, of the business. Yet another is the Walker people, a name you wouldn't see again over the door. You see, 38% of their business is in hospitality and retail, believe it or not. They work in the hospitality and retail area, and followed by the semiconductor and manufacturing, and then the pharmaceutical industry, uh, and finally the petrochemical. Those are the areas that they specialize in. But look at that, hospitality and retail. They could be running the canteen, for example, of a major hospitality company. They don't necessarily have to run them internally. There's always ways to look at outsourcing. <clears throat> ISS World is yet another based here in Singapore. Sodexo, as I mentioned before, uh, one of the largest in the world, uh, they have over 800 employees in 40 different sites here in Singapore, and you can see where they are specialized, but here in particular, and they side of the academic side and the academic university institutions, uh, the Mortar Restaurant at NTU. They run that. Compass is represented here by their division, uh, Erst. I think that's probably how you pronounce it. I don't know for sure. <laughs> Get a little bit of their overview of who they are. Compass Group is a large group of many different types of companies within it. They did our food service at University of San Francisco, under the brand name of um, Bon Appetit. They did the food service at San Francisco State under the brand name of Chartwells. 
two different companies within the same organization. One was a higher brand than the other. So this gives you an idea of some of the companies, some of the background of what's there in the managed service side. I highly encourage you if you think that working a typical work week of a corporate operation is what you want in the long run, think about this. It's not a bad idea. I find a lot of students who've gone into this particular area find that they don't have those weekend and nights that they end up doing in the rest of the business. So that's the lecture for managed services. We'll have some questions in class afterwards regarding this so we can do some follow-up on what your interest might be. All right, thanks. Bye-bye.